So, Toby, why don't we start with just the basics? Um, why don't you tell us what permaculture is and how it's different than the garden, gardening most of us have done? Sure. Well, Jean did a very nice job, actually, of defining permaculture about as a set of design tools for creating sustainable whatever it is, if it's houses or gardens or workplaces. But it, it's really a toolkit to help you make decisions. I, I think my favorite definition, and there isn't really a good short sound bite, I wish there were maybe applied ecology is about as good as you could get. But the way I like to define it is that if you think of things like organic farming and renewable energy and even things like social justice systems, more equitable social justice systems or local trading systems, uh, farmers markets that do organic food. If you think of those sorts of things as tools for sustainability, then permaculture is a toolbox that helps organize those tools and helps you decide when to use them and how. So it's not really a technique itself, it's kind of a meta technique that helps you make decisions about all the many different possible ways that you could do something. What's going to be the most sustainable? What's going to have the smallest carbon footprint? What's going to leave the ecosystem, local ecosystems in the best shape? So that's, that's really what it's about, is making decisions so that you can be more sustainable. Before we move on, just to bring it back to gardening, can you can you sum up how it applies to the gardening side of things before we move off of that? Sure, yeah. Well, if you think about a forest, you go into a forest, it's green, it's lush, I mean, a normal healthy forest, and you go away for three months, and you come back, and barring some bizarre catastrophe, the forest is still green and lush and healthy. You leave your garden alone for three months, <laughs> Uh, it's a jungle or a desert or a little bit of both. So <laughs> what is it that nature is doing that allows her greenery to right. do so well? And what are we missing? So permaculture is really trying to answer that, especially with regard to gardens, food production, all of those sorts of things. So what that item you mentioned earlier about perennial crops versus annuals, that's one tool we'd use is why plant a seed every single year and till the soil and all those sorts of things when you could grow a perennial that would do exactly the same thing and save you fertilizer and water and labor and all of that. So that's where permaculture comes into the garden. Would you classify it as a under biomimicry? I think that's a great way of, of thinking of it is that it's really gardening in the image of nature rather than gardening in the image of row crops and right. artificial fertilizers right. and all of that. I'm going to come back to something you said you were saying earlier which is um, uh, permaculture can help us with really all sustainable living practices. So my question is well what are the connections that that we can draw between um, permaculture and some of the, the um, conditions and the challenges that we face like uh, water scarcity and climate change and help draw some connections. Right, well. yeah. It really has to do with assessing what's going on, like what, what are your best local energy sources? What are your best local resources? Looking at the resources that are available to you and then looking at the things that you need and try and draw the closest connections between them. Permaculture really is a way of creating connections between things. If we think about what design is, a design is not a bunch of cool stuff thrown out randomly. A design is a bunch of things connected in really meaningful and beneficial ways. And so that's what permaculture is trying to do is where are the resources that we can use with the smallest ecological footprint, that kind of thing, in our area, what should we do? In some ways it's really very much about local, but that local can be your own yard, your own neighborhood, your own community, your own city, your own bioregion, depending on what it is. You're talking about getting steel or you're talking about getting snow peas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, so can you say a little bit more about the food forest? You started a, a bit about that. Can we really, can we really feed ourselves completely in our own backyard. You can certainly grow a lot of the really high value foods, the things that cost you a lot. Mm -hmm. Something you're probably not going to grow in your own yard are things like grains or you know if you eat beef you're probably not going to have a cow in a little urban yard. Mm -hmm. But you can plug chickens in really nicely. You know, chickens are this tremendously multifunctional organism and that's something that we use a lot in permaculture is the idea of things filling many jobs at once. And so a chicken is a way of, you know, it'll eat your food scraps, it'll pick bugs out of your garden. I've seen gardens that are immaculate 
kill it because there are chickens there taking you know, the, the harmful bugs out of your garden. It will provide you with eggs, it'll provide you with manure, it'll provide an alarm if someone comes into your yard, the chicken will start squawking. Right. Mm -hmm. It does all these different things and you don't have to do an awful lot of that work then anymore. The chicken will do this for you and it can, it can get a lot of the food that you're already throwing out or composting or that sort of thing. Yeah. So it kind of nests right in, I mean almost literally, but it fits <laughs> right in to the little spaces that, that are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love this, the term food forest. It's very evocative, you know, it just makes you kind of think of abundance and, um, you know, it's, it's a, a great term. But I wonder, um, my next question is about scaling a food forest for commercial production. Is it possible to apply these principles to feed many, many people? Right. And actually permaculture got started on a much larger scale. It was really broad scale for farmers, big orchards, big grazing lands, those sorts of things, trying to figure out how to conserve water and, and keep the soil healthy mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So really a lot of what permaculture has been is scaling it down to something smaller. But it's, it's been applied very successfully uh, in Australia where it got started on very large scale, of you know, thousands of acres of grazing land. And also it's been applied in the U.S. Uh, on 250 acre scale and that kind of thing. Okay. So it, wow. it definitely works on a big scale. Wow. And, and you mentioned a small scale, so you know how small is small because in, you know, in Portland, I, I think we have 30 by 50 lots or something like that. And I've got, you know, I don't have a whole lot of room. And the idea of permaculture is very attractive to me. But, you know, what, what can I do in a corner right. of, of my yard? Right. I've actually seen permaculture type gardens on balconies in apartments. Really? So teeny little things, just a, a fruit tree and a planter with a vine twining up it and a few little herbs planted around the fruit tree all working together. The herbs will attract the beneficial pollinators that the fruit tree needs and that sort of thing. Okay. So you can, you can make it, I mean, I could build a little permaculture type garden right on this table mm -hmm. if I needed to. So uh, what I'm actually, I have a one of those small urban yards and I'm really enjoying being in a small space because I can there's always room for me to fit another vine another herb another little flowering plant another insect attractor another bird habitat plant in there you, permaculture is in large part about stacking we'll put things in layers just like a forest where you've got the tall trees the short trees the shrubs the smaller shrubs the herbaceous plants and even ground covers and roots you can fit all of that on many, many levels stacked into a little tiny yard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it can scale up, it can scale down, um, but when does it work best? Because it is often based around perennial plants as far as the gardening aspect is concerned, it will take time for your fruit trees to fruit. Meanwhile, you've got other things going on that you right, might yeah. even pull out after the fruit trees are going and the berry bushes are going. So within about, uh, just as far as time, about three to five years, you'll suddenly notice everything clicks together, takes off, kind of explodes, and a lot of the work that you were doing in the beginning suddenly lessens a tremendous amount. Well, and it also seems like you might have to put in some extra effort at the beginning, you know, not only just learning and observing what's going on, right. um, but then also it's, it's like you have, to, you have to plant all the seeds Mm -hmm. uh, literally and figuratively yeah. to be able to you know have have a real f forest garden you know blossom four or five years down the road as you say just all of a sudden erupt right exactly yeah. Yeah. usually our, our yards then any of our landscapes have been so badly damaged somehow chemical fertilizers or compaction from heavy equipment on them or whatever that it takes a while to rehabilitate these yeah. things so that that upfront work rehabilitating creating great soil harvesting water all of that will really pay off in the long run right. tremendously okay great